But, you know, this was a horrible case. I mean, it was a horrible crime. I mean, it occurred in a, in a scenic, nice, peaceful part of the community. And, you know, we, we went, all went out there as a jury. All of us got to, to, to appreciate what kind of a place that was. And, and it did. It seemed like kind of a restful place where people enjoyed to come, and get together, and spend some time. You know, I when I first started hearing about the case, you know, you know, oh, it's about three motorcycle gangs or something. I, I don't know if they're motor, the iron or the iron coffins or a motorcycle group or a gang. I don't really care anyway. I said because you know what, they're three human beings. They were two were seventy and the other was eighty. And it was kind of interesting because they were all there kind of just taking care of one another. It's almost like, it's like almost you murdered three, you know, bikers in retirement. And, you know, I, I, I sat through the evidence and, you know, you, 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 you came out. And, and I don't know that we'll know for sure whatever happened, that it, what started it, what was the triggering event. Probably your methamphetamine use was something there. I mean, you sat through the whole morning, and people that are on meth, they get strung out of meth, they get highly unpredictable, they're easily excitable, they're given to not respond well in stressful situations. But I do know what you did do. You had a 40 caliber handgun. And you know, if you, later on we learned during the trial that you even talked to the police and said, you know, in that interview at Grand Rapids, you, know, you didn't always have a 40 caliber. You kind of traded up guns. And let me tell you, a 40 caliber you know, handgun is a man stopper. That's a big gun. You, you put them hydro shot shells in there, you put those hollow point bullets in there, and you could do a lot of damage and killing with that gun. And that's exactly what you did. You ultimately had 12 citizens randomly drawn from the community from all walks of life. And what did all 12 of those jurors come to a meeting on? They determined that beyond a reasonable doubt, they were not satisfied that you acted in lawful self-defense. They considered your defense. They rejected it. They convicted you of first-degree murder. They, were, they uh, convicted you of second-degree murder. They hung on the other murder charge. And, of course, we've got the other charges as well. And, and, and what did you do? Oh, well, you, you got your shooting rampage, and you just, you, well, you saw him get up off his bed, and you saw something shiny in his hand, and of course, where are you? You're in a meth rage, and then you just decide to start shooting. And you shot him, and he, and, and he went down to the floor, and then you saw him move. To me, this is the most significant testimony in the trial. You saw him move. An 80-year-old man that you already hit with a 40 caliber round, and he's moving. So, so what do you do? Do you just hold your weapon, control the situation, see what's going on? Hell no. You, you went and moved in. You hunted him down. You pumped multiple more rounds into that 80-year-old man, man and, and Mr. Fraley, and that's exactly why the jury convicted you of first-degree murder. You're very familiar with guns, Mr. Borden, and you picked one that certainly was able to finish the job and gun three men down in cold blood. And that's what you did, cold-blooded murder. So on count number three, first-degree murder, the court is going to impose the most significant sentence allowed under Michigan law life without the possibility of parole. You're going to go in the front door of the reception and guidance center, all things being equal, they'll take you out in a black bag on the way out. So that, that's what life without possibility with parole is all about, Mr. Borton. And you'll meet lots of other lifers out there that, you know, engage in the same kind of crime. You don't have to worry about your parole date because there won't be one. 